God is a big God and he's going to make your problems look so small when you get your view on him. And we're going to be talking about that today and all the things that pertain to what God has for you today on Hope Today. I'm Tom Hollis. I'm here with Amy Schaefer. Amy, tell us about our guest. You know, are you currently going through a difficult season in your life right now? Do you feel like God isn't even listening to you as you cry out to him? Coming up in just a moment, I'll be sitting down with my good friend, Sarah Connor, and she has the perfect recipe for overcoming adversity. Tom, adversity really is a part of life. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whether we want to acknowledge it or want not, it to be, but whether it we, is. yeah, whether we, whether we go there, I mean, listen, I know we're, we go from glory to glory, but you know what? Between those two glories, there's usually this uh, downtime. It's a valley when we go from mountaintop to mountaintop. We have to go through that valley. So as you watch this program, you're going to be uh, blessed as you're currently battling. Many of us are battling storms of life. You're going to be inspired. Find your purpose and use your gifts to glorify God. And as you stay with us, we're going to be just sharing about the good news of the gospel with you. That's why we're here, Tom. Yeah. We're here for the good news. There are many stations and programs that you could watch. You can watch, you know, Fear and Failure. You could watch soap operas. You can watch <laughs> reality shows. You can watch movies. You can watch a lot of stuff. But Cornerstone Television is committed to having the good news blasted 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And I believe, honestly, I believe we're here to change the world and that Amen. people need hope, people need salvation, they need peace, they need joy, they need to deal with fears and anxieties and pressures. And Cornerstone Television, Tom, is always there yeah. to help and to be there. Well, yeah, I mean, that, that is exactly why God has called this into being, as, as Amy said. There are other programs, some of them are good, some of them not so good. There's other stations, some of them good, some of them not so good. But at Cornerstone Television and at Hope Today, you're gonna to hear about Jesus. You're gonna hear about the one who loves us, who made us, who died for us, who rose again for us and lives now making intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. You're gonna hear about him and he's the one that's gonna make all the difference in your life today. Amen. Stay with us as I will be joined by my good friend, Sarah Connor, and she's going to help us overcome adversity and walk in the victory that Jesus desires for you and for me. We'll be right back. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. The world around us is in a constant state of reinvention from technology to careers to family. It's easy to struggle in the midst of change and each season brings new challenges. But we need to redefine our lives, the kind that leads to a new fulfillment and our calling in Christ. Let the baggage of the past become history today and let God renew your hope and you will experience the joy of living like never before. No matter what has happened, no matter where you're at on this journey, redefine, start fresh and love your life. Our guest, Sarah 
Cohen Connor is a known speaker, business owner, author of several books, courses, devotionals. She's the founder of Generosity People, a nonprofit committed to doing acts of kindness to women and children who are abandoned during times of transition. Sarah, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for having me. Ooh, I mean, I, <laughs> I know you. You're a friend. I know your story. I know yes. your testimony. Yes. So when I think about today, really redefining your life, yes. you have done that, not in one capacity, but in every single capacity in your life. Yes. And you keep redefining. So I, I'm talking about the time when, when like the rug is pulled out from yes, under you, yes. where you've been punched down. So this is kind of where we're going today. Yes. How do I get back up, bounce yes. back, mm -hmm. redefine, reinvent myself, and live that fullness that God has for me? Let's go. Let's go. I think, you know, as you said, you know my testimony. One of the most tragic things that had happened to me was the death of my mom. Right. And so when my mom was murdered, um, in 1992, I was a teenager, but I had to redefine my space even in that moment because no, I wasn't just an eldest daughter, I became more responsible. Mm -hmm. I also had to navigate my own mental wealth and spiritual depth that I could not depend on someone else. So I had an option. Crisis gives us an opportunity and adversity introduces us to an us that we often pass by. Mm -hmm. A more resilient, stronger, courageous us, but we're not sure who that is until adversity knocks at our door. Mm. We're not sure who God is until we need him. Mm -hmm. We're not sure who we are until we have to rise to the occasion. And so that was one moment I had to define myself. Was I going to get mad at God? Mm -hmm. Because sometimes bad things happen, hard things happen and we get mad, right? If God knew, he wouldn't have let that happen. Mm -hmm. And we get angry at God. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the murder of my mom, I understand that people have a free will and bad people chose to do bad things. Mm -hmm. So that's not a God fault. And a lot of times because we can't face a difficulty, then we, it's easier to just blame God. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to challenge us and say, hey, instead of blaming God, how about we define who we're going to be in that moment and who we want to be after that moment? Mm. I did not want to be bitter. I right. did not want to be stuck. I did not want to be left behind. I wanted to fulfill the calling of God on my life, even if I had to move with fear. You know, Hebrews 11 says, Noah moved with fear when he built the ark, it was, it was daunting, but he moved with something. Then I recently got divorced, um, maybe a little bit over a year ago, and that was another defining moment. <coughs> I had to know then, um, redefine. I was no longer working in you know, my industry or necessarily at my local church anymore. You know, I, my got, job got terminated, just a lot of different things happened with that. And I'm a single parent mm -hmm. with a minor, and I have to redefine what I have been doing for 20 years. I have been ordained for 30 years. I've been in ministry for 30 years and this is all I knew. How was I going to know not fall apart? No, I'm a divorced minister. Oh my gosh, I'm going to hell. Am I, I don't know how people right. are going to receive me or not receive me, reject me or not. And all of this was weighing down on me emotionally and driving me to depression mm -hmm. and anxiety and frustration and doubt. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you how I bounced back through that situation yeah. was Exodus 4. Yeah. Exodus 4, I read the story of Moses and it was when Moses had the stick and many of you may know Moses and the stick. And the thing was that at that time, Moses was defined by a sh as a shepherd because he had a shepherd stick. Mm -hmm. And that stick was used to you know, manage sheep. Well, he goes up into the mountain, he has this encounter with God and God says to him, drop that stick. Mm -hmm. And he says, drop the stick. And when he drops the stick, he says, pick the stick back up. And when he picks the stick back up, the stick turns into, you know, drops the stick, it turns into a snake, he picks it back up, it turns back into a staff. Mm -hmm. And God said to me, follow the stick, follow the stick. And so at the end of the chapter, you realize that the, the, the staff of Moses becomes the rod of God. Mm. It changes from something ordinary to something extraordinary. And he said, follow where that stick went. And it went to Egypt and it, mm -hmm. when it was raised up, plagues came. When the deliverance, mm -hmm. you put it over the, the sea and the ocean parted. Mm -hmm. You know, when they were in a fight and the armies and they, Aaron and her had to hold up his arms and the stick was up there, the Run. army got defeated. Right. When he struck the rock, mm -hmm. water came out. And God said, I am with the stick. He said, what is ordinary, mundane, boring that you think just defines you as a shepherd right. can also wow. define you as a deliverer, mm -hmm. can also define you as a prophet. Mm -hmm. You have to take the risk to know that your ordinary, what you see as ordinary talents, I can utilize that and cause different shifts and changes in different atmospheres. Mm -hmm. The call is the same. 
but the method may be different. Yeah. Jesus' call was to come and save us, yet God redirected him to Egypt. Mm -hmm. So the purpose of God for his life stayed the same, but the strategy shifted. And so the purpose on my life stayed the same, but now I had to find a different way of making income, a different way of doing things with all the giftings I had and the calling I had. And so I decided to coach, mm -hmm. develop, mm -hmm. do what I was doing as a pastor right. and do it in a more practical, tangible way, not just from a spiritual aspect, mm -hmm. but I was a business owner. Why not teach believers how to do business? Right. You know, I, I'm a certified Christian counselor. Why not mm -hmm. deal with mental health instead of mm -hmm. just dealing with it from a biblical standpoint. Like, let's talk about these things in real life. And so I had to deal with my own therapy, go to counseling, mm -hmm. submit and surrender to that. And at the same time, be like Nehemiah and have a double-edged sword situation going on, a double-edged assignment. And in doing so, that's what I want to encourage people. You have something inside of you yeah. that you overlook a lot of times because it's ordinary. Mm -hmm. But in times of trouble, mm -hmm. God says, listen, I'm still with you. I'm with the stick. You know, you don't have to wait on me. I'm already there. I will walk with you through the fire. I will walk through you in the flood. Mm -hmm. I will walk through you in the darkness. I will walk. I will cause the light to be just in your house and the rest of Egypt is dark. Mm -hmm. I am with you. And when I understood that, he was with me with the death of my mom. He was with me through every sexual assault and mm -hmm. <laughs> he was with me all the ways. And he's continued to be with me and he's continued to just allow me to redefine myself in and yeah. so helping people find their purpose and define themselves. Okay, let's say it's just happened. Yeah. It's brand new and fresh. Yes. The divorce papers were just yes. signed. Yes. The career they just lost their job. Yes. The the bank account. Yes. They opened it. So they're at this moment yes. right now. Okay. Give me give me three practical steps to get out of that. Okay, number one, put a timeline. Understand that you're gonna have to grieve. Yeah. It's a grieving process, right? Mm -hmm. You grieve routines, you grieve relationships, you grieve not just the relationship, you grieve the routine of the relationship as well, what you used to know. Mm -hmm. So number one, you have to put a timeline on it. So I would, in the beginning, I said, okay, it's going to take an hour of my day. And I felt it. I absorbed it. I sat in it. And I poured my complaints out to the Lord. Like I was mad. I was not like, oh, Father God in heaven, bless my tears. No, I was like, this sucks. This is horrible. I hate this. Why is this happening to me? It's unjust. It's unfair. It's not right. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was really with Real, God right so I poured that out and the more I poured out is the more he could pour in so number right. one own it yeah own where you're feeling uh, pour it out to God mm -hmm. number two understand that anxiety often is energy without a plan mm -hmm. wherever it's like a little gremlin worry and anxiety are like little children that don't have no playpen <laughs> they need a playpen <laughs> to stay in <laughs> you put them there too and they're going all over the place they need to be in there so now you have to say what am I worried about? Am I worried about the future? Am I worried about tomorrow? Am I worried about how I'm going to feel? Am I worried I'm not going to get married again? Am I worried about being depressed? What am I worried about? Ooh, then you realize... That's hard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're dealing with fears, oh, yeah. anxiety, your future. Yeah. It's, it's almost like a death to dreams that you have. Yeah, but I'm telling you exactly what I did. I yeah. realized that these, this, they didn't have a structure and an order. So I sat down and realized that I need to put order to it. Okay, if I'm worried about the future, what can I do right now to secure my future? One, what does the word say? He gives me a hope and he gives me a future. So let me try and calm myself into knowing that God is with me, number one. Mm -hmm. Practically, what do I have in my hand that I can do? I'm, I'm an author. What digital product can I sell? What, uh, can I sell my jewelry? Can I go on Poshmark and empty up my closet? What can I do to generate income immediately mm -hmm. that's in my ability to do? Yeah. So you don't just... You, you can crumble, but you have to put a time limit on that because if not, it's going to go from day to today. day to day and you will not get out. So climbing right. out one, pour it out to God. Mm -hmm. Number two, realize that you have to have a plan. Number three, take comfort in the scripture that it's true, you're not alone. So if you're not alone and you believe that and you know it, then you're open now to wisdom from God. God, give me wisdom. Number yeah. four, leverage your relationships. Mm. Ask for help. Yeah. You know, I went to my brother and I was like, I need $7,000 because I need to pay my attorney. Can you lend me $7,000? Mm -hmm. I paid him back, yep. but I had to borrow money to do it. Well, yep. that's what I just had to do. Yeah. And, and you find, you, you, you downsize and you start from where you are. And you yes. do not allow shame to get on you. Amen. Because ashamed is just accepting shame. Ooh. But I don't have to accept shame. Mm. That's my situation. I'm not starting over. I'm continuing. If I'm starting over, that means I have nothing. But if I'm continuing, that means I have wisdom from the past. I have resources from the past. I have relationships. Mm -hmm. Maybe all relationships didn't stay because in a divorce, some people, they don't know what to do. They feel uncomfortable, feel right. weird. They pick sides, you know. But 
you still have people that God will raise up mm -hmm. to advocate for you, to support you, to love you. Even if they don't agree with you, they'll still love you. Right. And so leverage those relationships and ask for wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's like, I think one of the things I was able to do even with you mm -hmm. and your husband, even last night mm -hmm. was ask for wisdom. Yeah and get real tangible wisdom because there's things that I've done mm -hmm. and I've been able to do that in this season, but there's also another season I want to tap into yeah, and course. I needed to tap into it. So I go to somebody who yeah. loves me, who understands and says, hey, yeah. I'll give you wisdom. Yeah. So I think that would be, and, and don't get disconnected from the local church, be, right. still be involved. Mm -hmm. You know, of course I have church wounds, <laughs> church wounds from more than one way, but the church is still God's way of building the believer, supporting yeah. the believer, being present for the believer. You know, that, that's still important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you pray for somebody right yes. now that is in a redefining moment in their life? Absolutely. Yeah. Father, thank you that you always hear us when we pray. And God, you're so good that you're present help in time of trouble. And you said, Lord, in the fire there, in the flood, you're there. You will never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You'll never abandon us or let us go. And so, God, even though we can't feel you all the time and we don't know what you're doing all the time, we can trust that the God of all creation, the God of the universe, has us on our mind. Your word says your mind is full of us, full of us. And every hair on our head is numbered. And every tear you have considered. So, God, we're so loved by you that in this moment, I'm asking you to give us wisdom ideas, witty inventions, that you give us the opportunities and the people that we need to connect to, that you bring us into the path that we need to be in, that Lord, you encourage our broken hearts and let us know that your plan is still able to be accomplished in the middle of our destitute state. God, that no matter what comes our way, that this too will pass and it will work together Amen. for our good. Yes. So I ask for courage and faith to be infused, that your angels surround any person that's in that defining moment right now, and that they will give themselves permission to be defined by your word, mm -hmm. defined by your plan for them, defined mm -hmm. by your purpose, and not defined by the situation, not yeah. defined by the destruction, not defined by the opposition, but God, that the opposition will strengthen them and make them better and stronger so they can go like Peter and strengthen their brethren. God, we mm -hmm. fail, but we don't have to, to be forsaken. We can fail in you because you're a love that we can fail in. And so we just appreciate you. We appraise you. We glorify you in advance that you're sending us into community to strengthen us. Thank you so much, God, yes. for what you're about to do. Amen. In Jesus', Jesus name. name, amen. Amen. Woo! Amen. amen. We've got the victory. Like my husband says, find a way to win. Find a way to win. Do it. We're already DNA coded to it. win. That's right. Do it, do it. Redefine your life. Thank you so DNA much, friend. It. Okay, thank you. You're yeah. awesome. <laughs> wow, for 45 years, decades, Cornerstone Television has been pioneering the way, bringing hope and encouragement with the gospel to the world for generations and generations to come. I'm so honored to be a part of this station, knowing that my children have something they can grow, learn on the truth, and be encouraged with God's word for generations. Well, it has been great for these many decades to be part of a ministry like Cornerstone Television that is reaching out. And as we uh, think about what, uh, Amy, you were just sharing with uh, Sara there, uh, I love how practical she was, but also so much of the heart of God. And that's what we have to share with you today, that God has a heart for you. You're going through, listen, she went through some difficult times in her life. Death of her mother, divorce after you know many years of ministry together. God has still got this. And I like what she said about she, she's not starting over, she's going on. She's not going back. See, God never takes us back. He takes us on to that new place. Everything may not be going today as we speak, as you sit there, as you think about where you're at. Everything may not be going just as perfectly as you would have liked it. Maybe it's not what you signed up for. But whatever it is, God is in the midst. God is in the middle of that to bring you to the place that he's going to lead you to. Just continue to follow him. That's such a good point that God will bring us out. But first of all, you have to come to the realization that you need God mm -hmm. and that you need him to bring you out. Bring you out of what? Bring you out of sin, death, eternal separation from God. So I don't know if you know this, Tom, but I do like to shop. 
I've heard that. <laughs> I do like to shop. It's, it's called uh, Retail Therapy. It's great. I highly recommend it. A full price is a bad word, so it's like a cuss word. <laughs> you know, you got a deal. So there You've are, been talking to Gene, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there are a few shops that I frequent regularly, yeah. you know, yeah. and I've gotten to know some of the owners and employees, and it's, and it's a great joy. I, I like to go and to be known and to know others. So um, I walk into the store, and um, it was pretty quickly the store kind of emptied out. And I was left there, you know, with the person that works there at the store. This person said, Pastor Amy, I know that you're a pastor. And I know, you know, you have a church. And I just wanted to let you know that I don't believe in an afterlife. I don't believe in eternity. And I'm sitting there and I'm kind of, I'm looking at the situation. He's just wanting to let me know that I appreciate what you do, that, that's great for you. But I don't believe that there's anything after this life. And I said, well, what happens when you die? He goes, I believe, you know, I, I've lived a good life. I'm a good person and, and that's it. I die and I, I'm just gone. And I just thought about it and I said, first of all, I said, that's really sad for me because I would love to be with you in heaven for eternity. And I said, here's, here's the bottom line. If you're right and I'm wrong, I lose nothing. But if I'm right and you're wrong, you could have eternity to lose. So I just wanted to remind you today as you're going through stuff, you might think, I don't need God. I'm good. I, I'm a good person. I can figure this out on my own. That's for, that works for you. I'm glad that works for you. But the scripture actually says that he has set eternity mm -hmm. in the hearts of man. You might not think you need eternity. You might not be longing for eternity, but there is a hole, a God-sized hole in your heart that only he can fill. There is an eternal heaven to gain and a hell to shun. So I'm going to make a big, bold move. And I'm going to ask you to do something right now. And I'm going to say, quit playing games. Quit wasting the time. Quit letting the days just blow off without making it right with God. That if something were to happen to you, when that time comes, because we know it is appointed that every man would, would die. I don't know when that day is for you. I don't know when that day is for me. But can you live confident that you have made it right with God? That's right. Can you pray this prayer after me? Can you just say, say, Lord, I've tried to do it on my own. I'm a good person, but I realize that I need you in my life. I need a savior that I have sinned and fallen short. And God, I ask you to come into my heart, bring peace of heart, peace of mind, make me right with you. This day will be a changing, defining day in my life. And I will never be the same. And you are the Lord of my life in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. It's so easy. And right away, you have what we would call eternal, eternal salvation with God. Give us a call at 888-665-4483 if you prayed that prayer with us. You know, we can't mess around with this topic, Tom, no. of eternity. That's right. You know, I, I, I like to travel, but I always have to plan where I'm going to go. I have to plan how I'm going to get there. Let's not go on that ultimate journey without planning, without thinking about it, without just sort of saying maybe like this, this young person t talking to Amy at the store, uh, well, I don't think about that. You know, it's important. Jesus talked about it. And it, it, just like Amy said, this is how you enter into eternity. You don't want to enter in. You're going to enter in one way or the other, but you want to enter in having this taken care of that God loves you, that he cares about you, that he has a plan for this life and for the next with you.
but that sin has crept in. And each of us have partaken of that and broken that relationship with God, just like our original parents did. Adam and Eve broke that relationship with God. We've been broken in that relationship as well. But Jesus loved us so much. God loved us so much that he came and took the penalty for that sin on himself on the cross. And not only did he do that and cause our salvation, but he also defeated the grave, rose again, and, you know, the, 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 I think it's 1 Corinthians 15. It talks so much about the resurrection and the glorious hope because of the resurrection. We can have that hope. So those are the things you need to know today, but it's not enough to know them. As Amy just led us in a prayer, you need to open that door of your life and say, God, come in. And even, if you're, even if you're struggling with understanding this all, say, I know I need you in my life. I know there's some, something witnessing in your spirit right now that this is true and you may not understand it all. Open the door of your life. Invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior and forgive you of your sins and make you a new creature in Christ. Amy, that's when we can be sure that we're on that right road. You know, the scripture says that now is the time of God's favor. Today is the day of salvation. My husband sat in a staff meeting the other day and he he was telling the staff the why behind all of the hard work and the what that we do. And the why is it's for people. We do this for people. And he literally cried an anguishing cry for an hour talking about people, you know, that he's come in contact, that need the Lord. People need the Lord. They need hope. They need peace and you have the answer. So I also pray for you today that you have a boldness to go and to tell your neighbor, tell the PTO mom, tell them on the job, tell your favorite coworker about the man that changed your life. I love that because, you know, it's not for, it's not, there's not like professional Christians, <laughs> you know, it's not for Pastor Amy or Tom Hollis right. to, to do it. this. I mean, yes, we're, it's for us to do it, but within our sphere that God has given us, God's given you a sphere. He's given you a place of influence. He's given you a neighborhood. He's given you a, a community. He's given you a family. He's given you places where you can come and be the light. You know, no one lights a lamp and hides it under a bushel. They put it on a lampstand that all can receive the light. And you are the light. Isn't that interesting? We call Jesus the light, but he says, you are the light. Look it up. He says it in the scriptures that you're the light. So be that light today. People are looking for the light. When we're stumbling around in darkness, we want the flashlight, don't we? You are that light. You are the one who knows Christ and can bring the love and the joy and the peace and the goodness of God to that person, wherever you happen to meet them, maybe at the store like Amy did, bring that light today.